Hey, what's up, and welcome to this episode of EST, the podcast for established church leaders by established church leaders. My name is Josh. My name is Sam, and I'm both sad and happy. Hey, um, speaking of sad, do you do you subscribe? Do you not care? Do you not well, even care? Well, I, just, I was going to um, unpack it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to unpack it a little bit. <laughs> speaking um, of being sad, let's move on. <laughs> Well, no, we're talking about big board of problems uh, today. How? Why are you sad I'm and happy? Put you, <laughs> put you I know on my why you're sad. <laughs> I know why you're sad, but why are you happy? Well, I'm sad because baseball season, at least for me, with my Tampa Bay race is coming to a close, and I'm happy oh. because hockey season's getting started. I got all of my kids' hockey sweaters. Mm-hmm. Um, all of them wanted cooch. So we're all going to be wearing number 86 to the game. So let's go bolts. Kucherov going to have a stellar year. Hedman going to have a stellar year. Pointer going to have a stellar year. Stamkos, we wish you well. If you don't follow hockey, I know that you don't care, but yeah, that's why I'm sad and happy. There you go. None of of that made any sense to me, but I am glad that you are sad and happy. We're going to be talking about the big board of problems. And so that would be, um, the, the end of baseball might be your big, on your big board, but uh, we'll talk about some other things and how you can address some of those things. Yes, but before we do, we want to thank our sponsor, Church Teams, and get this. Okay, so we've been doing this thing where we've been pointing people to their free trial, and I'm sure that Boyd would be more than willing to honor that if you reached out to him. But if you go to est.church, Um, one of the things that it will take you to now is a sign-up form for their new demo. So they have a new user interface. It's clean. It's contemporary. It was already good, and they've made it better. So this is an even better user experience. You've got to sign up for this. It's a 30-minute EST demo on November the 7th at 3.30 Eastern time, 3.30 p.m. I don't think it's 3.30 a.m. That would be weird. Um, so November 7th, 3 30 PM, 30 minute demo. And if you, the first 15 who register are going to get $20 Amazon gift cards. So get this. Oh, well, church teams is going to pay you to be there for a 30 (laughs) minute demo. demo. Now I I know what you're thinking. Okay. You know, if I don't have, you know, church management software, they're going to talk about, you know, my church having, of course they are. That's what they do. They run a business. Um, right. But Boyd is making it worth your while to go see this demo. Um, so the the church team's team are amazing people. You got to see this new user interface. Go to est.church to register, or you can use text to church and send demo, D-E-M-O, to 817-677-9750. And if you're like, that was too quick, it's in the show notes. Um, mo- I'm, th- I'm assuming if you're texting, you're going to go check the show notes, but est.church, probably the best place to register there. Uh, but if you want to do the text thing, it's in the show notes and, uh, yeah, first 15 are going to get $20 Amazon gift cards. So there you go. That's 40. He, yeah. He's going to pay you 40 bucks an hour, it's $20 for 30 minutes. It's 40 bucks an hour. Pretty great. I, I know. Go do it. Stay right. Go do it. Yeah, and and for some of us, uh, for some of our listeners, um, on your big board of problems may be some problems that are solved with church teams. It may even be a church management software. You've heard us talk about church management softwares before for years now and how good they are. You need to get a good one. Church teams is one of the very best. And so um, that could be on there. And Sam just took care of one of your big boards of problems. So Sam, I have in my office, I know that uh, those who are watching on YouTube, they can see your chalkboard because you're old school. You got a big old chalkboard behind you and you often have strategy strategies and, and just, uh, these aren't, uh, these aren't problems because some of them yeah. are my coaching clients that are up there and yeah, yeah. they're not, they're not a problem to me. I just want to be, but yes, when you say a big board of problems, I think most people know what you mean. It may not be literal. Yeah. In fact, if it is literal for you and it's in your office at your church, probably good to take that down and put it in a more private place. I have mine in my office. So I have a little like a podcast studio connected to my office. That's where I'm sitting now. And it's in here. I mean, it's I'm looking at it right now. And it's just something to keep. 
it's um, nothing on there would hurt anybody's feelings. All of it's normal. Like you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I've got it broken into some things like the major issue, some potential solutions and some malignant cultural elements. That's like just a cancer that's within our church. I've also just written some things down. And part of me is just like, it's fun to come through here and read it every now and then stay on course and cross things off and go, Oh, that's solved. Now we have moved past that. So Sam and I thought it would be fun to talk about big problems that are on a lot of people's big board of problems and what you might do to start to get a handle on that. Yes. So these are going to be fairly general, um, but we can drill into them. And these are things that really you and I are, I mean, these are on our big board of problems, right? So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the first one is, and this I hear this all the time from churches, uh, how do I get young families and how do I get my church to do evangelism? So let's just put that right at the top of the list. Big problem in my church. People aren't doing evangelism and I can't get young families, uh, as many as I would like to to attend. Uh, so this is on mine. Thankfully, we've, we've done better with young families, a lot better. Um, and we've become really more multi-ethnic, uh, which is awesome. We had, so we, we had 90 signups for our ESL classes on Wednesday nights. That's awesome. Yeah. And all of a sudden our church, we are already, you know, 20 to 25% Hispanic, but we started getting a lot more Brown, uh, which is just wonderful. Good. Um, yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, so we are doing better here, but we haven't always done well. And man, it took us a long time to get there. But, uh, Josh, do you, is this, is, is you, Getting more young families on your big board of problems. You know, it is a major issue here that we do need to get younger. And um, it was an issue. It's one of the reasons or, that they brought me in, that they hired me. It's something that I've done. And, and to be quite frank with you, I'm not, I, let's just be real honest. One of the easiest ways to get young people in the church is to get a younger pastor. I, I think that there's just a reality that we need to wrestle with and understand that if you have a senior adult pastor, oftentimes those churches don't have young adults involved. And it has a lot to do with just the preaching style, the illustrations, the approach that the church is taking, those sort of things. And so you either need to, if, if you're a senior adult pastor and you are like, uh, this church needs to get younger, maybe the question for you is, is it time for you to go ahead and step out of that main lead role? It doesn't mean you need to go off of staff, um, perhaps there's another role for you, but maybe maybe uh, the church needs a different captain. If that's not the case, then you need to start figuring out ways to just ask yourself. I think there's just like three or four main things. There's the image of the church. That would be like your social media, your graphics, that sort of stuff. There's the content of your preaching, illustrations. If all of your illustrations have to do with like medical issues, um, and none of them have to do with young kids or the workforce or something like that, or buying a what if, home. What if all of your illustrations are from the 1990s? That could be a problem. It could be. You're going to greatest decade, the greatest decade in American history, greatest decade of music ever. Um, if that's what's happening, then what I'm trying to say is, let's just be real honest. The image, the illustrations, uh, the representation. Those are three things. Big ticket. So if there's a senior adult pastor and we got to get younger, I would say try those three things there. Turn over the imaging of your like the logos, the social media to somebody that's younger. Just let them do it. Figure, Give them like a one page guide sheet on it. Let them do it. Start talking to more young adults about the things that they're facing and use those as illustrations. And then as far as representations, very simple things that we use uh, at, at the church's I pastor as far as representation goes. And this works for people of color, this works for women in leadership, this works for young adults, is the greeting time. Just schedule younger families to do the greeting, young couples, young singles to stand up there and welcome people to the church. You're still preaching um, or maybe they're leading worship, but you could turn over different elements of the Sunday morning and make a lot of progress if you just kind of think through your mind on that's, that's, it's not your age it's the things that go with your age. And look, I'm going to be in the same boat. You know, I happen to be 41 right now. Give me a few years and I'll be old and outdated and all that kind of stuff. And I hope that I think through it again myself at that point. So every church can adopt single moms. And if you adopt yes. single moms, 
you've got kids. Every church yeah. can either start fostering children or support families who do foster. Guess what? Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of foster children, you're getting younger and you have mm -hmm. children in your church. Uh, churches can do, um, I don't know, things like Upward. We've talked about mm -hmm. Upward before. Uh, previous mm -hmm. sponsor, we still love them. Upward, we still love you. Uh, of course. You, you're welcome back anytime. Um, you know, you can do Upward. There are all sorts of ways to draw in young people. Start it. I mean, you start talking about day schools and school of performing arts and all. I know that's a bit more complicated, but you may have the ability to do that. But at a bare minimum, you can start ministering to people who have kids. And if you do, they're more likely to attend your church. So that's a good starting point if you're talking about young families and outreach and trying to get younger as a church. Yeah. But there's another thing that we hear all the time at Church Answers on our big board of problems is facilities. It's on my big – my big board of problems contains a $2.2 .2 million air conditioning project. And I felt badly about it until – until I talked to my buddy. He's up in Pensacola, and uh, I – I don't know if I'm allowed to share these details. He's a great guy and he's an awesome pastor. <laughs> so I'm just not going to mention his name, not because it's secret or anything, but because I don't know what he's told his church yet. So I'll just hold off. But he told me, he said, um, yeah, Sam, I've been hearing about you because he listens. I think he listens to the show on occasion. He says, I've been hearing about your air conditioning problem. And uh, I was like, yeah, he goes, I've got one now. And I said, oh, really? How big is how what how big is your air conditioning problem? He said it's over five million dollars, and I was like, oh, "Wow!" And I just laughed. I just laughed. It, it, I, I may have cackled. I don't know, uh, just because mm. it's like, oh, somebody else feels my pain. Um, yeah, yeah. And they have more square footage than we do, so that's part yeah. of the reason that it's such a big project. But um, I'm sure that it, there are lots of listeners who have leaks, deferred maintenance, air conditioning problems. You name it. Um, this is something that can only be resolved with proper budgeting and, you know, asking, asking your people to help, you know, fund these sorts of things. If you don't have a line item for deferred maintenance in your budget, you'd better start one. Yeah, I, I, same as the other issue with the big board of problems. The first step is understanding. The first step is just getting really honest and asking the actual true questions with finding true answers um so let's let's first figure out what is the issue with it maybe the facility is old you know what i find in these conversations a lot of the times is that things get swept under the rug as far as fully understanding and people who are making leadership decisions are different than people who are making financial decisions are different than people that understand about acs or roofs or I don't know, like plumbing, whatever the issue might be. So really come to grips with it. We had to do that here and realizing that we are are a much larger facility than we need. And so the question is, we need to either grow or we need to do something else. But the, the goal right now is to grow. And we set some realistic numbers and said, this is where we have to get to for this facility to be what we can manage and what we can upkeep. And we put that before the people. We talk about it openly. We know that we have a goal uh, of becoming a vibrant church, and you can't just sit back and hope that something happens. You got to do something uh, with those facilities. So I would say just ask questions until you understand. And if you're like, I don't understand this stuff, there are people in your church that probably do better than you. Get them on your team. So the next thing that is often on a big board of problems is staff. And full disclosure, I like my staff. Um, I enjoy working with them and if none of them listen, so I don't even know why I'm saying these things. I feel like I've got to do some caveats here, but they, they don't listen. They don't listen to me at staff meetings. So why would they listen to, uh, to the radio show? Right. Um, so, but this is often a problem and I know not everyone has a church staff. Many of you may be sole pastors. Uh, but here's, here's the thing with staff, all of, all of your staff likely have constituencies. If you have a staff person who's a problem, rarely, rarely does the whole church agree with you. Um, there are times when a lot of the church will agree with you, but there's mm. that pain of they have this constituency in the church. Sometimes it's a powerful constituency and you can't really do much about that staff person. Um, you know, my dad had one, I'm not going to 
really we don't want to say too many details, but back in the day when he was still a pastor, he had to create a position for somebody because that person was just too ingrained with the power group. And rather than fire this individual, he just created a whole nother position and basically paid the dude to do nothing. And it kept the power power group from, you know, rearing its ugly head. I don't know if that's good strategy or poor management or what, uh, but that's what he did. And probably the best move for the church rather than wreck it. So uh, staff is often on the big board of problems. Yeah, yeah, they can be. And again, um, understanding what's going on here, sometimes staff are, are an issue just because they haven't been led or coached. It's not ne- it's not like a bad person. And that's what you really need to come to an understanding about. Is, is, is this problematic staff person, is this a problematic staff relationship because they haven't been trained well? They're a good person. They've got the They've got the basic skills. They just haven't been trained well. Are you running a different system than what they're used to? If that's the case, then you're going to need to talk about some stuff. Is there a personality gap there where your personality and their personality just don't align? Or it might be their personality and another staff members or their personality and some lay leadership that you have. If it's personality issue, you can deal with that as well. And so there's there's a bunch of reasons. I hear people regularly gripe about a staff person on their staff. And the, and when you really are asked questions, I'm like, man, that just sounds like a personality thing. That's not a fireable offense. And, um, you know, you don't necessarily want to move that person into something. I've seen people on staff that are in roles that they're not passionate about. So they underperform. And when you give them responsibilities that they are passionate about and you move some of the responsibilities around right people, wrong seat, then um, they come alive. So what I would just encourage people to do is to approach staffing issues with the reality that staff are people and they're multifaceted. And so really get to know them, try to figure those things out. Firing is just one approach and it's not, it's not, it's not a one shot, you know, gun. You can, you can do multiple things. I in fact think you owe it to them. Uh, to try multiple approaches. You owe it to your church. You owe it to that person uh, to grow together. Good word. All right. Next on the big board of problems is finances. And I want to get very specific here um, because, goodness, you could talk about cash flow or too much debt. Uh, You could talk about declines in giving, um, budgets that are out, out of line and need to be reallocated. Uh, any number of things here, but I'm going to be very, very specific. And the thing that I hear the most is how inflation is causing churches to need to increase the personnel budget beyond what is typical, you know, when it comes to the overall budget. So, you know, you want to give people cost of living increases and inflation has been so high of late that if you are keeping pace as a church, e- either you've got to, and let's assume that giving isn't going up at the same rate, which in most churches it's not. So you're seeing a greater portion of church budgets go towards personnel, not because churches have inflated or bloated staff, but rather because they've kept the same staff, they needed to pay them to keep up with inflation. And the church did not correspondingly give at the same rate. Therefore, what was a personnel budget at 45% is now 50 or 55 or 60%. And I see this over and over again. And it's something that we've struggled with at West Bradenton. Our giving has gone up every year, but it's slowed down. Um, thankfully, people are still giving very generous, but you know, every year has been a record year, but it's been less and less so. So that rate's been slowing down. And we've had to try to keep pace with our staff. We don't want to let anybody go. We've got more people here. It's not like we're a smaller church. We're bigger with the same staff. We just have to pay them a little more. And it's getting harder and harder to do that. Mm. Yeah. When it comes to church staff, the issues are not always just what you're paying. There's also package structure. There are often, very often, Churches are just really poor at making what we would call business decisions. And 
they're just not strong at it. And it's probably not under your leadership listener. It was probably under, you know, some previous leadership or a different committee or a different group of people that were making that call. But when you start to look at the benefit structure, benefit package, the benefits may be out of whack. And you may be offering something, um, for instance, churches that offer full family insurance for a, a staff person um, at 100%. Well, what you're allowing to happen, and I, you know, I, I support that idea if that's what the church decides and, and that's the best idea. But the insurance company is going to just raise that every year. Uh, I mean, every single year, you're going to have to give more money towards that package. That's pulling out of the personnel line item. And you're going to have so it to the church budget. It looks like the staff is getting more money and they are. But to the staff's take home, they're not. And so you're going to have to kind of do some sort of one way or the other exchange on how that works. You're going to have to shop your, you're going to have to do your homework, you're going to to shop your benefits, all that sort of stuff. The other thing is staff structure. It's not just the, the package structure, but also the staff structure. And churches evolve. And a lot of times you'll see churches that are built like a 1990s church where every minister has a administrative assistant and um, an associate minister, those kind of things. And it's like churches aren't built that way anymore and they shouldn't be. And so you may want to readjust the work that people do. Um, The reality is if you're a grown adult, you can schedule your own meetings. You can answer your own phone calls. Um, You shouldn't be paying somebody to do that work. Now you could double up the work in other ways. So structure is another element that needs to happen as well. And then last, let's talk legacy. Um, this is the EST dot church podcast. Right. So we all have this baggage that we inherit. Sometimes it's good stuff. Sometimes it's not. Uh, I uh, I pastored the founding church of the cooperative program. Mm-hmm. It's not West Bradenton, but it was First Baptist Murray, and I got reminded every week that we were the founding church of the cooperative program. If someone didn't tell me that, then I saw it on the historical marker as I was, I walked in. <laughs> and there was this one day where it, it got knocked over and it was just really funny to me because not for most people in the church, for some people in the church, it's almost as if their idol, you know, got crushed. <laughs> It's just like, oh no. But we have this legacy that we inherit. Not West Bradenton. Um, Brother Bob still here. He pastored the church for 30 years and loved the guy, has a great legacy. Church has a good reputation. Um, but there comes with a certain way of doing church, you know, a certain way of doing church. There's things mm-hmm. I'm inheriting from him, good, bad, or ugly. There I'm inheriting them. Uh, same at first murder. There's plenty of good things that I inherited, plenty of tough things with that legacy. Um, so Josh, how do you handle like the problem? There's good in legacy. Let's just say that, Mm -hmm, but sometimes mm -hmm. legacy carries with it problems. How do you handle that? Well, I would say uh, having pastored a couple different churches now, churches that are doing well, as far as the number and the finances, they normally have a very hard time, uh, being honest and coming to terms with the negative sides of their culture or their systems or their structure. Um, when, when churches are growing and money's good and, and they feel like they're the big show in town, uh, they often won't address the systemic things that are just sucking the life out of pastors and leaderships and stuff like that. So, um, but here being at a church that was not doing well, is in a long decline and, and uh, much smaller it's easier to see, okay, something's not right. What is it? And one of the most beneficial practices, we've had a previous episode on whiteboard sessions and just having a whiteboard session in which we acknowledged the past. And, and then I was able to use that conversation to paint a picture of seasons that different churches go through seasons of life. And there are programs that have a shelf life. They come about and they do really well, and then they pass on. And that's okay. And what, for whatever reason, I think it's cultural. I think there's also some philosophical issues with it as well, emotional. Um, churches tend to hold on to things and just never get rid of them. And they just 
whether it's physical things or programs or something like that. And we really need to teach churches that programs have a life. They came about for a purpose and then they went away. And there was a season where that program wasn't even around. And then it came and it was great. And then it went away. And so there's some of that, uh, even pointing out and trying to figure out, I know I keep saying this to every big board of problem, but the problem is understanding why did that structure get put into place in the first place? When you figure that out, you can either go, okay, well, let's keep it, but let's tweak it. Or you could say, we don't have that problem anymore. So let's get rid of that thing that's limiting us. So our student pastor, who's been here about a year now, recently came to me. He's cleaning out everything. He's doing a great job. We renovated our whole second floor for the student area. It looks great. Um, and so he, he found a box full of bow and arrows, and not like Nerf bow and arrows, like legit competition bow and arrows randomly in a room that had not been locked. And he's like, Sam, why do we have these? And so we went and looked at them and sure enough, it was camp. I think it was Camp Flying Eagle. I think that's what it, I think that's what it is. Hmm. Uh, where 30, 40 years ago, they always took the students to camp and they would shoot bow and arrow. I'm assuming they weren't shooting them at each other. It would, these things would kill you. Um, not, so we had, yeah. no, no, no. I probably shouldn't say this on the air, but at this point, I, I don't really care anymore. Uh, I've been doing this for just too long, but we had lethal weapons on our student <laughs> floor like because of the legacy of the church. Someone put them in a room, in a storage room that was not locked, and just they'd been there for 30 years or however long, 40 years, and we opened them up and we're like, oh, no. So uh, go check your closets for lethal weapons. That's uh, mm. that's how we'll end. Uh, make sure that you get yeah. rid of those so that no one no one does anything with them uh, on that's campus. Great idea. Yeah. But uh, thank you for staying tuned in with us. And thank you, Boyd and church teams. Uh, Boyd's actually going to be on an episode coming up here soon. He's got some good stuff uh, to share, including this new user interface. And again, they're doing that demo on November the 7th at 3.30. So uh, 30 minutes and they'll pay you to be there. First 15 that are registered get a $20 Amazon gift, co gift card. So go to est.church to get that and hey everyone we've got an episode coming up next we're going to be talking about an attitude adjustment mm, so if you're listening those. to these back to back to back it'll just be coming right up and if you listen to them right when they come out you'll have to wait a week but we'll see you there peace <laughs>